Hey, it's Ed, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play with iOS Music Apps. Today, we're going to be looking at BeatHawk from UVI, and um, uh, my goal in this video is to give you a quick overview of uh, BeatHawk as an app, for those of you that may not be familiar with it, not too deep, uh, and the second thing is to talk about the things I'm going to talk about in the in the other videos in this series. It's probably going to be three or four, something like that, maybe a bit longer. We'll see what the response is. Basically, what I want to talk about is what I find useful in BeatHawk in 2023, what I'm, how I'm using it, how I think it's useful, um, cool things about it that I found, interesting things, weird little quirks I found, workarounds that I found, um, and different ways I can use it. I use it in AUM. I use it uh, in other projects. I use it in different ways uh, to interact with different apps and things like that. So I'm going to go into that, but I want to give you a quick idea like of what I'm going to cover overall, which is like basically the practical features of it. Like you've, if you've never used BeatHawk and you want to learn how to get in there, uh, I would suggest you go to some other videos first. Uh, there, I'm going to have them in the links. But if you want to just quick dive in to you know, what, what's interesting and maybe useful about BeatHawk and what are some of the, the things you can do with it, then absolutely just step right in dive right into this one and the following videos. And let me know if you have questions uh, as these come out and I can see if there's things I can include, include that I haven't included. So feedback is, is always welcome. So let's get started. First of all, um, here's the uh, website description of BeatHawk on the UVI site. It's a portable music production studio. Basically, it's, a, it's an all-in-one type app. It can run standalone. It doesn't host AUV V3, but it can run as an AUV3. That is, you can run it inside uh, AUM, for example, or Logic Pro. And uh, so it comes in real handy. It's got an arranger. It's got uh, pattern recording. You can export to MIDI. You can um, output MIDI, all sorts, of, all sorts of cool stuff. You can output stems and so, so, so on and so forth. Pretty standard stuff. It's got a lot of built-in sounds. It comes with two sound packs um, from the factory. Uh, however, if we look in the track section here, um, you can see all the sound packs. It comes with two default ones, EDM Factory and Urban Factory. The ones that I've um, that you're seeing here on the left are ones that I purchased myself. So I've got a few. I'd love to try more because there's some really, really nice ones, I think, that I'd that have some really interesting sounds that I'd like to check out, but you know, I have a I have a budget, so I gotta I gotta plan for these accordingly. And um, as you can see here, there's a lot of packs available, and some of them I'm probably not that interested in, but some of them I'm very interested in, like the um, uh, electric organs, uh, electric piano. I heard that's very good. Uh, the B3, I heard that's very good. I heard good things about the acoustic grand uh, as well. And uh, what else? I think dark atmospheres. Subculture Orchestra, uh, UVI has actually incorporated some of their sounds from their latest products, um, full-fledged products into these packs. So now I got I to gotta say like, you know, these packs are like sound packs light. This is a mobile version, you know, it's a mobile uh, app and they're only a few dollars each. If you look at the prices, if I go back here for just a second, for example, here's, here's a $7 pack. Here's a $5 pack, $7, $7, or $5. They're, they're actually pretty reasonable. Um, not going to be as full-fledged as the desktop, right? But it's going to give you a taste of what the desktop might have or, or a desktop you know, app might have. You're not going to get the same thing. But at that price, I, I got to say it's pretty compelling for me. You can decide for yourself. But I found some really, really cool stuff. The app itself is $10, which is not bad. It has gone on sale a couple times for free with 50% off the uh, in-app in -app purchases to, for the packs. I hope they do that again because I'm gonna, I, I'd get a bunch. But um, anyway, to get back, here's the uh, layout. So let me quickly give you like the, the, the quick jump in and start using BeatHawk uh, um, demo really fast. So let's say you open up BeatHawk and you just wanna start using it, right? And you've never used it before. You can watch a ton of videos if you wanna learn the the, the full-fledged way. I'm gonna give you the shortcut, right? So you pop in here. What you're gonna do is, uh, it's pretty obvious, so you got a bunch of pads here that can be loaded up with sounds. Now, by default, you know, you can use these built-in sounds that come with it. Right here, you can select any sounds from these categories that you want. 
select a pad, click load. It's going to then be, you'll be able to play that sound on that pad. You can adjust the, the, the volume of that pad, pan, pitch, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's how you get started. Um, and now if you want to just, if you want to just play these like drum pads without any pitch information, you can just tap on these. It's great. I think, however, um, this application is uh, oriented toward people with a MIDI controller or that are using some sort of a MIDI, external MIDI control, because you really can't control pitch and you can't control the volume on these pads. There is this volume tab on the left here. So like whatever pad I've got selected, you know, I could change the volume while I'm playing that one pad, but eh, it's not very practical. So I'm gonna show in the later videos, I'm gonna show how you can get around that with, you know, if you're using the app in AUM or inputting from other things. So you can totally get around that or just hook up uh, your own MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller, or whatever you want. And um, there's ways you can do that, um, which will let you play, play these pads with different pitches. Now, uh, let me quickly go over here to uh, song mode just because it's there. So it's pretty self-explanatory, as you can see here. Um, these are patterns on the lower left. These are the same patterns. If you click over here on the upper right, these are your patterns. Uh, right now there's 10 patterns. This is a demo. Uh, it's got 10 patterns loaded, each one of them. Let me just play a couple here for you. That's pattern number one. That's pattern, it's gonna play to completion. There, there's pattern number three. Uh, you can see the length is four up there in that little box. These patterns can be different lengths. It can be, I think, up to, I forget the, the exact length. We have to open up 16, looks like 16 bars. So anyway, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, I was a little intimidated by this interface when I first got it, but realistically, it's it's if you just focus on the elements that you need to use, it's very easy to navigate. And I do like it, it's very clear visually. It's kind of a nice, clear visual color scheme nice graphics, good layout. So, and that was pretty advanced for when it came out. Now it's a little bit, you know, the competition has kind of stepped up, but um, song mode is, you know, pretty self-explanatory here. You know, you can see, you can arrange these, these uh, patterns in any order that you want on this timeline, pretty standard stuff. You can mute and unmute these pads on these patterns. You can see down here, these got these little boxes that, that uh, gray out when the, when the pads are muted. So you can, you could do a live playing, you know, you could play this thing live and select your, you could have a song, you could then go in and customize, you know, which pads are playing, you know, things like that for dynamic changes, all sorts of fancy stuff, right? Like that. And then you would just go in and, you know, save your project and that would save all the pads and the, the song itself uh, as part of it. So that's pretty much it. Everything else you can find in the other videos, um, you know, how to create a song, all that good stuff. How to, how to use those pads, how to copy between patterns, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, I'll quickly go into, however, the, the step editor. Now, if you select a pad, this is where you got to be careful, right? If I select this pad on the lower left here, now if I go into step editor, it's going to specifically go into the step editor for that pad. Uh, let me turn off the CC control. This is, I think, the default here. So you'll see these notes playing. It's got a complete piano roll for that pad. Uh, now, if I click on the next pad, and I go to step editor, you can see there's different notes. And if I click over here, again, um, where is it? Uh, maybe there's not much on that pad. Let me pick one that's maybe got more stuff on it. Yeah, here's one with some more stuff, right? You can see some, some notes in here. Um, and uh, so each pad's got its own piano roll. You just got to click on step editor to get there. Now there's there's a few ways to get around uh, that into that in and out of that piano roll and select the pads because like if you were just going to hit these pads and go to step editor and have to go back and forth, there's going to be a real pain, right? But you can actually do it right from here. Um, if you go into this, you can you can either you can this is an overview right here. If you tap on this the second thing right here, you can actually select. Each individual uh, pad, you got one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 16 right there. And going from low, lower left to upper right. So you can select them that way. Then 
for this particular line, this is kind of the global view, the global view of all the things. It's going to show you a bar if there's anything at all in that particular pad. And as you can see, like some of these pads have nothing, right? If I click on the little keyboard, it's going to take me specifically to that pad. And if you tap on the left, on the upper left, you see that little, that's that pad right there. Now, if I want to change, uh, if, if I don't want to have to bounce back and forth between here and here and going back and forth, right, what I could do is you can actually do this little trick. It doesn't work very well in AOV3 mode, and you got to be real careful where you tap. But you can tap this, 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 uh, and you got to be kind of careful where you tap. If you tap too far to the left, see that little M that muted it? If you tap too far to the left, it mutes that, mutes that track. I guess that's a feature, but if you tap very carefully in the middle... You can select these tracks uh, without having to, having to bounce around. You got to be careful on the outside ones. If you if you tap along the outside edge, it makes this disappear. But if you tap in the middle or near the upper left corner, you can usually do a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm gonna get, um, get that on, and it lets you switch around a lot easier. The other thing that's interesting here um, is you got a CC control, for example. So if I select one of these pads. Uh, let me select maybe this, which one? That one, for example. Yeah, here we go. So as you can see, there's some CC controls, um, and there's a number of parameters that are exposed here, a lot that you can program, and there's only a few that seem to actually do anything, like the velocity, the pitch bend, uh, the modulation wheel, things like that. But it's pretty cool because you can hook up something like an external controller, or you can actually go in here and manually edit this if you want. Um, if you go in here, for example, you can draw in uh, these modulations yourself and override what's there. You can record in, if you have an expressive MIDI device, it'll record certain ones like these pitch bands, uh, the modulation velocity for sure. Uh, I don't know about the others. Um, so that's pretty, that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, this little mute thing, if you happen to mute a pad <laughs> inadvertently, it uses this little mute here and that'll unmute that pad. So quickly, that's a quick overview of kind of like the pads, the song mode, uh, the arranger track, things like that, um, that are gonna let you navigate this app. So um, let me take a step back. So like basically, if you were to stop right now with just that information, you could, you could just go right in, create a song right off the bat right now. You could just go in here, load up some pads, either use a built-in kit, whatever you want, load your own, you know, get some other, you know, choose something else for one of these. Uh, I just loaded something else. Let me put it on pad, All right? Got to have it on pad or it's going to play. I should know that. That was playing, right? I just loaded that sample right in there. So, and there's different sample types. I'll go into that a bit later. There's different kind of uh, sample types you can load. There's, there's basically three, three or, is it three or four, three or four different sample types. And um, you can load, uh, they behave a little bit differently. I'll go into that later. Um, but basically, and some of the videos I have will go into that. So you can immediately get started going on this. If you want to, you know, be fancy, you can go create a song. But let me get back here to um, the basics. So let me show you some cool stuff uh, that you can do with it. Um, as is. And let me load up AUM. Let me bring up AUM here. I've got a little project I loaded up in AUM. So there's a couple ways you can use um, the application. And again, I'll go into greater detail in other videos. A couple ways you can use this application. You can, you can have it send everything to a single channel by selecting that channel. And um, that way, for example, this, this interface looks a little different here. It might be a little confusing when it's loaded as an AV3. The, um, the little keyboard, you gotta click this icon. This, this M is the mute. This here is the volume. This is the bring you back to the pads up here in the upper left. So it's really the same stuff. It's just the icons will look a little different and it's a little bit smaller. Um, but basically what I've got here in this first slot, I've got a drum kit loaded. And so I got different samples. This is from UVI. I've got a, a kit loaded on this, basically. 
Um, they have multi-sample kits. You can, you can load samples, but you're only going to be able to load a single sample, not a multi-sample. UVI packs will have multi-samples available, so you would load it up to that pad. It's going to have, some of them will have multi-samples. You'll see by the little icon, it'll have a, a kit. It'll say kit on it, and that's how you can tell. So in this case, we have a multi-sample. Most of the multi-samples start on the note C2. So for example, if you uh, if I were to go down to C1 here, see, nothing's happening. But C2, there's stuff happening. These little arrows, these left and right arrows, move that keyboard up and down in the range. You know, like up here on C4 now, it's very hard to see, but um, that's not going to play either. All the samples are basically between, where is it? Where do they end? Uh, it looks like C2 to B2. Oh, and a couple more. Looks like maybe D3 is the highest. So anyway, what I'm doing here, so that's good to keep in mind because if, if you might get confused if you're trying to tap on certain things or play certain things and nothing's coming out, it's because those, those multi-samples are only available within a certain range. It varies a little bit from one kit to the next, but that's good to know. That's one of these, that's a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about in these videos are little little bitty things like that can, that can really trip you up. Uh, that I'll explain uh, that you can watch out for and uh, use to your advantage. So get back here. In this first slot, basically, I'm using this to play drums. I'm using this first pad only to play drums on a multi-sampled kit, and I'm feeding it some input from uh, Digistix right here. So I'm going to be feeding in uh, multiple instruments. It's going to be playing different notes here, and that's going to play all the drums right here just from this first pad. The second instance, I've got these, all these different things loaded on these different pads. That's going to be this instance here. And I've got their settings in, um, inside the application, which will let you control how it behaves. You can send everything to a pad. You can send things to multiple pads. You can choose to select your pads by MIDI and channel, which really gets... You can, that's really powerful. You can really do a lot with that. I'll show that later too. So it's very flexible in how it can be used. Um, so uh, let me give you an example here. Let me just pop this out. Now, if I just play this by itself, right? This first one, you're just gonna hear drums. And you know, this first, this first pad is playing and nothing else. Now, if I load this instance, you'll see that multiple pads are playing. And it's actually playing a pitch per pad. So that's the other thing to take note of, is like when these things are playing, when it plays these pads, it can play any pitch uh, within that pad, which couldn't do by hand, right? However, because it's coming in from an AUV3 instrument, I'm sending to this pad, and I'm doing that, um, in this case, in uh, DigiKeys. What I've done is I've said, you know, like drums, for example, I've got that going out on a MIDI channel one. Uh, by default, it comes out on MIDI channel one. Uh, this uh, synth lead here, I've got it going to MIDI channel four. And the way it works is these pads are ordered in terms of MIDI channels. So this is MIDI one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 16. So you can send any pad you want, depending on the settings, and then send uh, a pitch to that pad uh, and play anything you want within that pad. So each one of these is basically an individual instrument. So I could load up multiple instances of Beathawk and have an instrument on each pad, or I could simply load one instance, load different instruments on each pad and play all those instruments at once. It's really your choice, it really depends on the situation you're in. So that's an example of how you can use Beathawk. And I'll go into the settings, but quickly, I would just quickly show you uh, under the preferences where you would set that. So right here under MIDI audio, this is where all the magic happens as far as those pads. You got uh, send Omnion pads, MIDI select, and select pad on touch, select a pad, MIDI through. Um, I don't use the MIDI clock. Uh, the MIDI output, uh, you can use that, but I don't use it too much. And then of course you got MIDI channels. You can filter out MIDI channels if you want. So. If you got things that are sending on multiple channels, you can you can have multiple instances of beat hawk, filter out, do all that fancy stuff. I don't use that too much myself either. But I'm gonna show you later on 
exactly what settings you use for each kind of use of BeatHawk. Basically, there's there's three ways it can be used. Number one, uh, send a send to a single pad, play multi. You know, it's a multi sample. For like example, these drums. That's first kind. Second kind, uh, you can uh, MIDI select. That's what we got here. There's also a third kind, uh, which is um, you can send. Uh, it's the send omni on patch, basically. Um, each pad's going to use a, a, a fixed note. Not quite as helpful as the other two. So I'm going to talk about that later, too, each of those three scenarios and how you can use BeatHawk for those, for those reasons. So um, let me next show you um, a couple examples of BeatHawk in action. Let me pull up uh, another example here. Trying to find the right, here we go. All right, so here's another example of Beat Hawk and Amption. I'm gonna say no to that. So what I've got loaded here, uh, I've got, uh, let's see, oh, let me uh, let me load the other file. That was, that was the one I already had. Let me show you another one. We're gonna use uh, this one here, all right. Now here what I've got is, uh, I got um, BeatHawk loaded up, and this is uh, a kit from Mobile Music Pro. I'll have a link to the description for his kits. He's got a lot of free kits, very nice drum kits and other stuff. Uh, this is from from his site and um, his product site. And um, I got a bunch of percussion loaded on these different pads right here. And uh, I loaded that up as a as a kit because he he offers the. Um, the packs in BeatHawk form, you can load it right up. You don't have to map out all these pads. You can just load an entire kit and every single one of these automatically loads up. So it's convenient. Um, but you can also do that yourself. So to go back here, uh, let me just show you what I got. So this is an example where I've got it loaded up as a drum kit. And then I'm also driving it from uh, Digistix here. And what I've done is uh, I've got Digistix mapped out so that it's playing um, on each pad. If I hit play here, what you'll see is, uh, let me get this out of the way. Okay, yeah, let me hit play on. Here I've got it, instead of having it just on the first pad playing multi a multi-sample, I only have, these are single sample pads. Uh, so I'm playing multiple pads on this and I've got it driven through Digistix 2 here. And I'm gonna talk about Digistix 2 in later videos. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. I'm sure that you can do this with other um, drum applications in uh, AUM or uh, AUV3 apps as well. You can actually map all of these. Um, each one of these can be mapped to uh, the BeatHawk pads one-to-one. -one. You can also use auto sample and take the entire, you load a whole uh, set of pads, load up all the pads, you can go into Dig Keys and use the auto sample feature. Uh, I'm sure you could do this on other uh, drum apps or sampling apps too, um, and automatically sample every single one of those pads into this map set right here. And then you can then just play everything straight out of Dig Digistix 2 and just turn off uh, BeatHawk if you wanted. On the other hand, you can combine the two, which is what I'm gonna show here, and you can throw it together with another app if you really wanna you know, get creative and try try interesting things. So I'm gonna show you BeatHawk as well as Digistix 2 in action, and I've got SDSX loaded here. So when you start throwing these things together, it kind of creates this dynamic uh, combination, and you can do all sorts of interesting things. It gets a little complicated, but it's actually quite easy to manage if you know what you're doing. So let me show you. Uh, so for example, I'm gonna load up Digistix 2, let me start playing this here. So basically Digistix is running in MIDI mode. It's got no output there. Got another instance, but that's out of the loop right now. So all your sound is coming right out of this BeatHawk instance right now. And now if I go over here, I got SDX2 loaded up. I'm gonna be sending, I'm gonna be playing from SDSX drums. Uh, and I'm also gonna be sending some output from SDX into BeatHawk. So it's going to be a sort of an interesting combination. Here we go. It gets a little loud. Let me turn that down a little bit. Now 
Now, if I wanted to play some drums, I could do that on this. I got this keyboard map over to Beat Hawk too, and I could I could just punch some stuff in. You know, and you can actually um, you could actually go in here into this pattern, and you could actually record straight into that pattern. In fact, I should just try it right now. Let me just give it a shot and see what happens. Let's rewind this. Let's set up the record and hit play. All right, that's enough. Let's stop that. Let's stop that transport. Now, let's see. Let's go into our step editor. Yeah, sure enough. Let's take a look here. Let's see what we got. Let's look at the uh, global view. Yeah, we got some drums going on in there. So let's see if we hit play right here. See, the AMM, AMM transport's not running at all. This is strictly what I stri recorded straight into that pattern. So, you know, this could come in handy too. You could have up to 16 patterns. You could record it, you know, you could record it out to helium. You could record it out, let me pause that for a second so you can hear me. So the possibilities are really, really wide on this. Um, and that's what I like about it. There's a lot of flexibility. Beat Hawk has a lot of great sounds, but it's also got quite a bit of flexibility that you might not see on the surface just looking at the app initially. So um, let me give you, let me stop there because I don't want to take you too far down the rabbit hole with, with all, the, all the demos and stuff like that. You know, this video will get too long. I'm going to save some of the other demos for other videos, show you how to use it. I use it in different ways with different apps and things like that. But I just want to give you flavor of, how I can use it in, in different ways and um, how it sounds. Um, so let me give you a quick, uh, if you're still sticking around here, let me show you something that I put together, which I think you might find useful. And hopefully UVI won't, uh, won't have a problem or issue with this. I'm sure they'll let me know, know if they do. But I've actually put together a list of all the packs and the prices as of this date and a listing of the details of the presets and the samples and the size. And if you look here and actually see the prices on most of these, uh, it ranges from you know, $199, I think the highest is uh, $999 is the highest price. Um, now, I got at the bottom, I kind of total this up. Now, this is unfair. You, you would never buy every single pack from, for this application because you would never buy every single pack for a desktop app. It would, it would cost way too much. I mean, unless you actually, you know, were a producer or something and you needed all that stuff and you were going to use it, sure, you might use it, but you'd probably be using a desktop app, something, you know, full-fledged, right, for the for the pro studio, right? Not this. So, but if you think about it, you know, you could get by with like 10, 10 of these would really, really cover a lot of ground, all sorts of different instruments across the board. And then you could pick one up whenever you want for five, six dollars, um, seven dollars and there's a lot of samples in here like some of these this, this one for example 1300 samples they're not that big this one um, uh, let's see let's see this one has a thousand samples this one 1700 samples I'm taking this off of what the what's listed in the, um, the add-on packs so that's where I'm getting this information from and uh, you know here you can see a list of the instruments that are available they got drum kits they got drums piano uh, ambient sounds, synth, brass, bagpipes, electric piano, glock, marimba, choir, um, strings, orchestra sounds, bass sounds, guitar sounds, woodwinds. Some of these are loops. Some of these are pre-recorded loops. Some of them are uh, samples. Uh, some of them are actual playable instruments. Um, it'll show you when you go in there, uh, like I said before, just to show you again real quick. Uh, playable instruments would be like if I open up EDM Factory, for example, like this is like a playable instrument right here, Deep House, uh, right? Uh, or if I go into instrument, for example, right here, let me load this one up, for example, right? I can play all the, all the notes on this instrument. If I pick something um, like a loop, uh, let me pick a loop from something else here, like uh, instrument loop, right? Now, this I can't play uh, as an instrument. If I load this up, I mean, you can sort of, you can pitch it, you know, but you can't really play it like, like an instrument per se, right? It's a loop. And it's a tempo locked loop. As you can see here, it's 82. There's also um, 
There's also loops that have um, the ability to run samples. To sp they're split up, and I'm going to get into that in the later videos. There's just too much to cover uh, all at once. Um, and these can be sped up and slowed down. I'll just show you that real quick. So, for example, here, this is a, this is a, a sample. Now, you can, you can stretch this sample to play faster or slower without changing the pitch. You can change the pitch using the pads. I should say the keys. Uh, you can also change the pitch in this little slider, as you can see. So that's going to be that's going to fix it, of course. You know, so if that pad, if you wanted to play that pad at a different pitch permanently, you could just do that right here. Uh, and then there's a lot of other cool cool stuff you can do um, that I'm, I'm going to talk about in other videos. I'll give you a little preview. MIDI Learn. It's got a very nice MIDI Learn feature in here. There's only a few things that are exposed. You can see here uh, what they are. These values here uh, work in MIDI Learn. And if you tap on one of these, and you can just select a MIDI channel that uh, you want to use for the control. So that, ends up, uh, that opens up a lot of possibilities uh, for AUM or if you're using an external instrument. Um, cancel MIDI, MIDI Learn there. Um, so there's just so much to cover. I can't possibly even get even tap a, a decent amount in this one video. And I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna really try to cover the stuff that hasn't been covered in other videos. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned in for the next one. Let me know if you have any questions. In the meantime, and I'll, I'll try to incorporate it if I can get them in before the next one. Thanks for watching.